Hello friends, this is Russian Torts here with another video for you guys and um, this is actually the start of a new series and I think I'm gonna call it Cheap and Easy Pets. The idea behind the series is that um, I want to show you guys certain pets that are cheap to um, acquire in the first place and then that are cheap to care for as well. So this is gonna start while I'm in Germany because obviously I'm still here for another like month and a half so I didn't want to wait until I'm back in Canada and I haven't made a video in a couple of days so I figured it was time so as you can see by the title of the video we're gonna start this series off with giant African land snails now giant African land snails are um, pretty cool little animals they're sadly illegal in Canada and the states which is why I had to make this video here they're considered an invasive species and um, they, you know, they're rightly considered that because they would decimate crops and all that stuff. So you don't really want to have them in Canada, the States, in a tropical climate where they can survive. I don't know how they would survive the winter in Canada, but they're legal, so we can't really argue with that. However, in Germany and the UK and I guess other European countries, I don't know. I just know Germany and then I read a little article on them about in the UK. They're legal, so I'm actually allowed to do this here, which is great. So this is probably not going to be a great pet for those of you living in the US, which is most of you. But if you're part of those like 2% from the UK that watch my videos, this is for you. So giant African land snails as babies really look like regular snails. So I'm going to show you what they look like right now. Here they are attached to this leaf. They are just little babies right now. They're really cheap. So I got these from a person on Kijiji. And I paid... a. Uh, less than one euro a piece so I got seven of them for five dollars I was supposed to get four for uh, sorry seven of them for five euros I was supposed to get four for four euros but then she's like oh just take these as well and I was kinda like ah, I don't really want to have all of them but I guess so and then I felt bad so I gave her another euro I could have gotten seven for four euros but they're very cheap to get in the first place and they're cheap to care for so once you have your giant African land snail babies I mean, unless you want to start off with a big snail already, but it's kind of cool to see them grow from these tiny little things that are just about half a centimeter long to things that like, have a shell length of 20 centimeters. So once you have your babies, there's actually not a lot else you need. You need a plastic container. So this is just a little Tupperware container with a lid. It definitely needs to have a lid because otherwise the snails can obviously escape. Here we go, just a little container. They're babies right now, so they don't need a lot of space. Um, you need some substrate, so here's some eco-earth. This is a whole brick. You definitely don't need a whole brick, but you can't buy a tenth of a brick, so I had to buy the whole brick. That substrate's gonna last for a while. And you need some cuddle bone. Again, cuddle bone's very cheap. This is really important for healthy development of the shell. Um, obviously, you need a little spray bottle, so just a little plant spray bottle. They need a relatively high humidity of snakes, about 80, as a snakes, snails is, um, at about 80%. So it's important that you have a spray bottle. And then you need to have some sort of water bowl. So what I'm going to use is actually a bottle cap again. And I just have a bunch of bottles lying in my room. So I'm going to grab one of those. So give me one second. So here are the little bottle caps just off water bowl. You can also use those little um, deli cups. They work just as well. But I mean, I'm reusing plastic right here, right? Reduce, reuse, recycle. Very important. So... Um, you don't want to fill them a lot because snails, as babies, they uh, can drown in pretty shallow water. So I'm going to just fill like tiny, tiny little amount of water in there and just kind of fill it up each day again. It's going to help keep the humidity up and it's going to allow the snails to soak in some water if they want. And um, that's pretty much all you need. You can also obviously decorate the enclosure with uh, some pieces of driftwood and that sort of stuff and cork bark. But... To keep it simple with the baby snails, I just kind of want to put substrate, water dishes, and cuddle bone. Because when they're little babies, they um, poop these tiny, tiny little poop poops. And um, you can't really scoop them out. So you need to kind of replace all of the substrate um, once a week. So I just want to keep it simple. I don't want to have those big cork pieces to clean. Once they get larger, um, then I can put in some cork cork bark pieces because their poops are also larger makes it easier to clean so let's get to setting up the snail cage enclosure I've talked enough I think so first what I got to do because it's a little plastic tub 
with no holes in it. I gotta drill some air holes in for the snake. Snake, jeez, it's not a snake, for the snails. So I'm gonna drill some air holes in this little uh, tub. I don't wanna do too many because they do need a high humidity. However, there needs to be enough air circulation for there not to be any mold on the substrate. So, I'm gonna do that with a little drill now and I'm not gonna show you guys because it's pretty boring, but you'll be back as soon as I drill the holes. All right, and um, so I've prepared the tub. So here's the lid with some holes drilled into it. Here we go. So holes are drilled, and really that's all the preparation you need to do with the tub. Um, it doesn't need a heat pad. They are um, giant African land snails require a temperature between 20 and 25 degrees Celsius. So that's um, about room temperature in the summer. And right now it's summer, so they don't need a heat pad. In the winter time, they would need a heat pad, but um, right now they don't so obviously I'm not gonna go around and spend the extra 20 euros that that would cost me if I don't need it next thing you want to do is add your substrate now if you prepared your cocoa fiber like I did from the brick the cocoa fiber is going to be a little bit too wet so what you want to do is you want to grab a handful and actually wring it out I'm gonna grab a handful of the cocoa fiber here and it's still pretty wet I want to wring out the water you see all the water coming from that cocoa fiber you don't want all that extra water in your um, enclosure. So I just wrung out that hand. I'm gonna add the cocoa fiber and I'm gonna add a pretty um, thick layer. It's gonna be about probably half an inch because they do like to bury themselves in the substrate sometimes and when they do it's good for um, them to moisturize. I guess moisturize is not really the right word but to uh, retain their moisture. So if you have a really thin substrate, they can't really bury themselves and uh, they might dry out. So that's never a good idea, obviously. So I'm almost done um, filling out the bottom of some substrate here. So obviously you can also use paper towel, but then you run into that issue that they can't bury themselves in paper towel and you can keep the paper towel moist, but it's also not really as uh, pretty to look at as um, having a little tub with dirt. This way it actually looks like you have something alive in there. Um, which, you know, with the snails, they're not very active. Sometimes it's a good thing to have that uh, alive look without actually seeing the animals. So, they're little baby snails, so I think this depth of substrate is enough. And before I continue, I gotta wash my hand because it's a little bit dirty, so I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back. So. Hands are washed, and I took the time to grab a little piece of cucumber as food because I feel like we, I guess we need to talk about food a little bit as well. So they eat uh, cucumber, lettuce, carrots, apples, that sort of stuff. Pretty much kitchen scraps, all vegetables. Um, you want to try to keep the amount of fruits down. You want to feed mostly vegetables, but occasional fruits as treats as fruits as treats. Yeah, occasional fruit as treats is fine as well. So. I'm gonna put the little bit uh, of cucumber in the cage. So right now it's of course very exciting to look at. Just a little piece of cucumber in um, the enclosure. And then I'm gonna break up a piece of the cuddle bone and put it in there. I'm not gonna put in the whole cuddle bone. They are little snails after all. They're um, not gonna devour a whole piece of cuddle bone. And um, if it gets dirty that way, I'm not wasting money. So I'm going to break off a little piece, which apparently is easier said than done. Jeez. Good thing you can use a knife though. So broke off a little piece of the cuddle bone, which is now in there. There you go, next to the cucumber. And the last thing is to add the um, water bowls, which... There's one over here, and I don't know where the second one went. Here they are. So, two water bowls. Gonna put them in, put them in there, and I'm gonna fill them very lightly with water. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the squirt gun, the sprayer here, and use that to fill them, because I don't wanna pour and make the substrate too moist. All right, all right, so there's the setup of the cage. 
Now the last step is to just add the snails. So I'm going to take them off the leaf that they were on overnight and put them in their setup. So I got uh, seven little baby snails. I only got that many because I was worried if some might die, I don't want to just buy two and then be left with none. So I got seven. There's no way we're going to keep all of them when they're adults because seven snails, the amount of eggs they will produce is absolutely ridiculous and they breed like crazy. So really, the only want to have one as an adult, the rest are probably going to get eaten by uh, our chickens or by us because apparently they make for pretty good food when they're adults. So here they are and I'm going to carefully scrape them into their new inclu enclosure, enclosure, carefully scrape them into their new enclosure. And here they are all nice and set up in their kit in their little enclosure. You can see one of them already coming out. And I know people are going to say, you snails are slimy and gross, but African land snails are actually pretty cool pets just because of the size they reach. They're not as slimy as you would think. And as babies, they're just so darn cute. So um, that's it for today. I want to say thank you for watching. I hope you find these little buggers as cute and amazing as I do. And if you have a tortoise or a reptile that eats veggies right now, I actually have a contest on my channel for some food, which is... Oh, the camera is standing on it, so you can't see it. So some tortoise food or bearded dragon food or whatever. So check out the video. I'm going to put a link in the description for the contest and participate because right now only one person has participated and that means by default they're going to win and that'll be pretty boring. So I hope I see some more videos soon. The contest ends August 15th, 2016, so this year. And that's it. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a like. And I will see you guys next time.